Hello everybody, Andrew Majewski here with Dental Ill Tutoring. So let's talk about board exam prep, specifically the last few days that you have left to study for the board exam. So you might be taking the board exam next week, in two weeks even, um, but I have a lot of students right now that are taking the board exam in two days and I'm getting a lot of messages, a lot of emails saying, okay, what can I do to prepare for this board exam? What should I study? What should I not study? Because in two days, you clearly don't have time to read the whole textbook and study for everything, right? So let me go through a couple main topics, a couple main questions that I want you guys to know for the board exam. But first of all, keep studying, okay? What I tell my students is study for six hours maximum a day. So you could do two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon, two hours in the evening. Um, but let's say you do have to work as well. So that can depend. If you have time to study three hours in the morning before work and then three, three hours when you get home from work, that's a good idea too. So it really depends on your life. If you have kids, it might be harder to study, say three hours at a time. You might have to do 20 minutes at a time but add it up to six hours a day. I don't want anybody to be studying for 20 hours a day or I don't want anybody to be studying for half an hour because that's not going to do too much either. So let's talk about studying. I want everybody to keep on studying for the board exam. Don't study until 2 a.m. because you need your sleep. If you're trying to study and you're half asleep, trust me, that's not going to help anybody. Now, topics. You probably all want to talk about topics, right? So, and I should mention, sorry, you guys, this is specifically for the dental hygiene board exam. Um, I teach dental assistants as well online, and but I will do that for another video. Um, even if you're not a student of mine, that's okay. This will still be a good sort of overall review for the board exam for you. Now, if you are a, um, a student of mine, the best thing to do, honestly, you guys, is put away your textbooks. Put away the textbooks, log inside your course that, that you have purchased, and look through the mock exam PowerPoints. Look through all of those mock exams because mock mock exams are the best way to study at this point because you might think you know what you know, but you really don't know what you know. I know, sounds confusing, but you won't know until you take mock exam questions and study that way. You might think you know everything about perio, but you do a mock exam questions um, on perio that are inside your module, inside the course, and you might go, oh shoot, when the question is being asked that way, I actually don't know it. So then that tells you to restudy Perio. So you get the idea. If you're not a student of mine, then the best thing to do is actually to open up a textbook and go through your chapter. So let me tell you what I want you guys to go through first. So I'm just gonna look on my other monitor here, you guys, cause I took some notes for myself. Okay. So let's just talk about perio first. So I want you guys to know about perio and gingivitis. Make sure you understand the basics, as simple as that might sound, but understand the basics. Know the differences between perio and gingivitis. Know that as soon as there's just one four millimeter pocket in the mouth, that is perio. That is localized perio. It's not generalized, it's localized but the patient does have perio, okay? Think about perio being attachment loss. Perio is when they do start to lose the bone support around the teeth. At four millimeters though, you're probably not losing the bone support yet, but at five millimeters, that's something to think about because that's automatically moderate perio. And what do we know about moderate perio? We know that can start to lead to bone loss. Do you remember how you check for bone loss? you would check for bone loss in radiographs. So you might have an idea doing your periodontal probe, like, oh, there's generalized five millimeter pockets in there. Ooh, there might be some bone loss. You can only tell bone loss for sure on an x-ray, but also keep in mind, early signs of bone loss do not show up on an x-ray. So I hope I'm not confusing everybody. I'm trying to give you guys as much info as I possibly can. If anything does sound confusing, I can help you guys log inside the course, look under that module, okay? So now talking about gingivitis. Gingivitis is a gingival condition only. So if the gums are bleeding everywhere, 
they have gingivitis. Now, this is where a lot of students might get a little bit confused. Do they have early gingivitis? Do they have moderate gingivitis? Do they have severe, ging um, severe gingivitis? If you see heavy bleeding everywhere, I would consider that severe gingivitis. If there's a little bit of bleeding here, a little bit of bleeding there when you're doing the teeth cleaning, okay, you, you might say light localized gingivitis. So, kind of depends on a couple things, but that's just sort of a nutshell. If you need more help with that, you guys log inside your course under perio and gingivitis. There are hours of like mock exams to do. Make sure to look at our um, previously recorded sessions online. You will see that in the private Facebook group that I have for students only, okay? Um, uh, what else, you guys? So yeah, so perio, gingivitis, please make sure to know that. I could talk about this forever, but I'm trying to give you guys kind of a good ballpark on, on everything. Um, a quick side note though, note the difference between chronic and acute. Somebody would have acute gingivitis if let's say they have a popcorn kernel stuck, but it is the gum around that is puffy, sore, inflamed. Yes, they have gingivitis because it's puffy, sore, and inflamed, but that would be more acute, not chronic. Chronic is when somebody hasn't had their teeth cleaned in two years. Um, they brush maybe twice a day, but still, you know, the gums are puffy, red, and swollen. So definitely know the difference. Now, I'm going to switch gears a little bit, you guys. Know the different types of fluoride. On the board exam, fluoride varnish is everything. If you don't know the answer, the answer is probably fluoride varnish, okay? They love that. There are, um, there's neutral fluoride. There is acidulated phosphate fluoride. There is stannous fluoride, and there is sodium fluoride. So let me explain that a little bit. Um, I hope I'm not boring you guys too much. This will probably be a longer video, but I know it's going to help. So acidulated phosphate fluoride is typically in foam, okay? That is when you need to make sure that the patient doesn't have any composites, any amalgams, any restorations, anything like that. That would typically be put in those trays and then in the patient's mouth. I don't use that anymore in my practice, but there are probably some offices that still do. The neutral fluoride is typically in a rinse form or a gel form, okay? Or a mouthwash form even. Um, neutral fluoride, even, I'm just kind of looking at the mouthwash that I have here. I have a neutral sodium fluoride, same thing. So it is just more of a neutral, better for everybody, um, that type of thing. Oh, um, the acidulated phosphate fluoride, sorry, let me put a step back here. That is 1.23% typically. Whereas if you're looking at a neutral fluoride, actually it actually says here, you can get one for 0.2% uh, or 0.05%, okay? Remember, 0.2 is a higher concentration of fluoride, so that's technically better, but we do have lesser amounts as well. But then, if you're looking at um, um, fluoride varnish, which I actually do happen to have here, that was not on purpose, you can get a 2.5% sodium fluoride varnish. Sorry, it's not really focusing here. My apologies. 2.5% sodium fluoride or a 5% sodium fluoride um, varnish, which you have probably seen more of. That is used as a varnish to paint on. Great for sensitivities, great for gingival recession, and if a patient gets cavities. I am pro all the way. I love fluoride. I don't care if you're four years old, if you're 60 years old, if you're 20. Everybody, mostly everybody needs fluoride, but they love to ask about that on the board exam because they want you to know all about fluoride. So definitely know the different types. Fluoride varnish is everything simply because it sticks to the, the, the teeth better. There is better uptake with enamel, that kind of thing. Um, a little side note, also know that fluoride helps to um, remineralize enamel, okay? When you have a cavity, when you have sugars, that demineralizes enamel. So the fluoride helps to bring all of that back to remineralize enamel. So far so good, you guys? Okay, let me check my notes. Make sure to know pharmacology, of course, 
know, you know, the more common medications, okay? Know the differences between, oh, this is a medication typically given to cancer patients. This is a medication typically given to people who have bipolar disorder, such as lithium. Um, this medication is a typical antidepressant. This medication is for high blood pressure. Know those types of things. Now, I could do a whole video on um, pharmacology, so that would just take up too much time, but, you know, feel free to stop the video right now and study pharmacology, okay? That is something that you guys have to know. Um, other simple facts, which you might not think to study for, but brushing twice a day is good enough. You would never tell a patient to brush five times a day that's not better than twice a day because a patient's not going to brush five times a day. So we don't wanna scare them and say to have a perfect mouth, you need to brush five, five times a day, right? That kind of thing. Brush twice a day, floss once a day, that is the golden standard. Using a mouthwash isn't for everybody, but that's even better adding a mouthwash in there, okay? There are many things we can do. I'm just actually bringing over a slide quickly. I want to show you guys some oral pathology, okay? Um, actually, my apologies, I opened up the wrong slide, but that's okay. I can still talk about oral pathology. And this way, if you don't know the answer, since I just don't have the slides handy, you can look it up, right? No oral pathology. Think of things like macules, papules, pustules, and nodules. Know the difference. Quickly, a macule is a freckle. A papule is like a mole. A pustule is like a pimple. So there's something inside of there. Um, that type of thing. Okay, you guys know that. Know the common oral pathology normal lesions, such as linea alba, no leukoedema, no, I'm drawing a blank, no lingual varicosities, no angular chelitis, no, kind of drawing a blank here, guys, I apologize. Know the basics of oral pathology. Even, I probably have a video on YouTube. Feel free to do a search for oral pathology inside my YouTube channel. You will, you will probably find a, um, a video for you to help you. If you are a student of mine, all you have to do is log into your course, go under oral pathology, you will find what you have to know for the board exam on oral pathology. Don't read the whole textbook. There's no time for that. Just look inside my course and I have that there for you, okay? Um, a quick side note again, um, if you do have a couple weeks or even a month to study for the, for the board exam and you're kind of thinking, oh, I kind of need Andrea's help, but I don't have that much time, I do now have something called an express board exam prep course. So that is specifically for those people who just want a review of what they have to know for the board exam. So you would log into um, your course, you see PowerPoints, you see mock exams, you see case studies, and you see videos of me teaching you, you know, what you have to know. Not, you know, hundreds and thousands of PowerPoints, but just what you have to know for, for the exam. So that is an option. I can leave the link for you guys on the bottom. If you're not a student and you are considering that because that is $99, totally worth it. You, you get so much for that price. And that's for people who have like a month, maybe even a week or two to study for the board exam. And you just want to do what you have to do to pass, right? That's what we all want to do. But anyways, you guys, okay. So make sure to know your oral pathology, pharmacology, know your medical emergency situation. So what does it look like if a patient is about to faint? How can you avoid that? How can you prevent that? What does it look like if somebody's having a stroke? How do you prevent that? That type of thing. High blood pressure. What do you do if, if a patient's having a heart attack? Perfect example. If somebody's having pain in their chest, they could be having an angina attack, which could lead to a heart attack, who knows, but they could be having an angina attack. They need nitroglycerin, a pill or a spray under the tongue, under the tongue, because that's the quickest way that it goes through the body, three times at the most. So give them a spray or the, or the pill, wait five minutes if it hasn't helped, do it again, wait five minutes if it hasn't helped, do it again, wait, wait like five minutes, but then you have to do something. You can only do it three times, 
they're probably having a heart attack. If it hasn't helped them then, then they obviously have to go to the hospital. Okay, so something to make note of, something to remember. Make sure to know your blood pressure chart. So know what is high blood pressure? What is hypertension? When should they go to the hospital ASAP? That kind of thing. Know those types of things, you guys. I'm just looking through this quickly. Know your special needs patients. Know, you know, seniors. Know if they have a health condition. Know those types of things, okay? They want you to know that. Um, a quick side note, for seniors and for children, so talking about, you would probably have this in your ethics section under abuse. For children and seniors, we need to report abuse. For adults, we can't necessarily report it, that adult has to come forward. I could go on like about this forever, but same thing, you guys, I'm trying to keep this short and sweet for you, just to give you an idea of what to study for, okay? Um, know your plaque and tartar, as silly as that sounds. Know you will have the acquired pellicle first and then plaque forms plaque forms and then if plaque isn't removed obviously hopefully you know that much by brushing and flossing then calculus forms um calculus is calcified deposits can only be taken off using your instruments okay so know that also know when you should bring a patient back in three months in six months in nine months it all depends on their pocket levels, depends on bleeding, it depends on their oral hygiene. So know the differences. I have a couple videos on that too, so definitely have a look. Know the difference between class one occlusion, class two, and class three. Know those. Know um, Black's classification as well. Please know that. What else can I tell you guys? Um, sorry guys, I'm just kind of looking through a couple things. Those are, I know it's not everything, but that's a pretty good start, right? Actually, let me pause the video. I just want to log into my course for a second and just kind of give you guys a little help that way. So one second. Okay, guys, sorry. So I just had to refresh my memory here. So no x-rays, no processing errors. They want you to know manual and digital processing errors, which is super annoying because we don't really do manual anymore, but some offices probably still are, so know that. Know your panoramic x-ray landmarks, please and thank you. Um, very important, of course. Let's see, guys. Know your instrumentation techniques. Just kind of going through a couple things here. No infection control and sterilization. No things like what you need inside the package, what you need outside the package. Definitely know that. Um, community. Now that is something, please don't laugh too hard, that I tell people don't, don't study it too much because you will end up studying community for eight hours today and then you will feel like you know nothing. And then on the board exam, they will have questions that you didn't even study for. In my opinion, in my expert opinion, I've been doing this for almost 16 years. I have been teaching for almost 16 years as well. Um, community, you really can't study for well because they will ask you questions on the board exam that you just couldn't have studied for. Um, of course, you guys, I'm not saying not to study for it, but if you're taking the exam, say in two days, I would study for other things. Um, for community indices, I would study that, which if you guys are a student, log into your course, there's a PowerPoint labeled indices under community. Study that and that's a pretty good start because I don't want you to get stressed out trying to study for community when it's very, very difficult. Um, anesthetic, know the injection techniques and the injection sites. Even here in Ontario, we, well, depending on where you are, a lot of hygienists can't give the needle, can't give the injection, but we still have to know it. So know the injection sites, patterns, which um, in, um, injections freeze, which teeth, know all of that. Um, just kind of browsing through. Know your oral facial anatomy, so the different teeth, the different landmarks, I know. Hopefully I'm not stressing you out too much, 
but I just kind of wanted to give you guys a good overall ballpark of what you still need to look at, okay? Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. Thank you guys so much for watching. Good luck on the exam. You will be done soon and you won't have to study anymore. Okay, you guys? Good luck, good luck, and good luck. Okay, guys? Bye.